Scholastic Audio presents Goosebumps, Horrorland 7, My Friends Call Me Monster, by R.L. Stein, read by Vinnie Penna. Chapter 1 Michael, this is crazy, my friend Daisy Edwards whispered. We shouldn't be here. Too late, I whispered back. We're already here. Daisy was right. Sneaking into our teacher's house was probably a bad idea. But there we were, the three of us, me, Daisy, and our friend, Dwayne Walker, standing in Mrs. Hardesty's kitchen. My eyes darted around, trying to see in the dim light. All the shades were pulled. Weird. She keeps her house as dark as our classroom, Dwayne said. The kitchen smelled of cinnamon. Mrs. Hardesty had a lot of snapshots on her fridge door. I glanced at them quickly. The faces all seemed blurry. An empty egg carton stood open on the sink. I led the way into the front room. The shades were down there, too. The couch and four chairs all matched. They were black leather. I saw knitting needles sticking out of a ball of wool on a table beside the couch. A tall wooden clock on the mantel ticked loudly. I'm not happy about this. Daisy whispered. What if she comes home and finds us? We're dead! No worries, I said. She's still at school. Let's dump the cat and get out of here, Dwayne said. He raised the carrier in front of him. I could see the black cat's blue eyes peering out at me. You're probably wondering why we sneaked into Mrs. Hardesty's house with a black cat. Well, our plan was simple. Mrs. H is very superstitious, so... She comes home. She looks down and sees this black cat rubbing against her ankles, and it totally freaks her mind. I wish I could be there when she went nuts, but I planned to be far, far away. The cat pawed the front of the carrier and meowed. I think it wanted out. Monster, just open the carrier, Dwayne said. Let it go and we're out of here. My friends call me Monster. It's kind of a cool nickname. You see, I'm a big dude. I'm 12, but I look like a high school guy. I'm pretty strong, too. That's a good thing. But I guess kids also call me monster because of my temper. That's a bad thing. My parents say I have a short fuse. That means I explode a lot. But hey, I'm not angry all the time, just when someone pushes my buttons. Which is why my two friends and I were in Mrs. Hardesty's house. Our teacher had been pushing my buttons ever since she arrived at Adams Middle School. Let the cat out, Dwayne said holding the carrier up to my face. Not here, I said. Mrs. H will see it too soon. That's no fun. How about the basement? Daisy said. Mrs. Hardesty opens the basement door, and there's a black cat at the bottom of the stairs staring up at her. Can you picture it? Awesome, I said. I jabbed my finger into Daisy's forehead. I like the way you think. We searched the hall till we found the basement door. I pulled it open, and we stared down into the darkness. I fumbled for the light switch, and a bulb flashed on overhead. I led the way down the creaky wooden steps. The cat me out again. Be patient, I said. You'll have a nice new basement to explore, and Mrs. H will take good care of you. We stepped into a short hallway. The air grew cold and damp. The basement was divided into two rooms. Both doors were shut. Dwayne set the carrier down on the floor. He bent to open its door. That's when we heard the sound. A heavy thump from one of the rooms. We all froze. Dwayne's hand shot up, away from the carrier. He stared at me, his mouth open. Daisy took a step back. I heard a groan. Another thump. My heart did a flip-flop in my chest. There's someone down here, I whispered. We didn't say another word. Dwayne grabbed the carrier by the handle. We spun away from the doors and took off. We scrambled up the stairs. Our sneakers thudded loudly all the way up. I was nearly at the top when I heard a metal ching. Something hit a stair and bounced down. Something fell out of my pocket, I cried. Was it my cell phone? I couldn't go back for it. We had to get out of there. Someone or something was coming after us. Chapter 2 Two Weeks Earlier How many of you have heard of the Loch Ness Monster? Mrs. Hardesty asked. Several hands went up. Here she goes again. I whispered to Duane. He sat beside me in class. Duane rolled his eyes. Always monsters. 
The other sixth grade class is doing the Civil War, I said. All we talk about is monsters. How weird is that? Duane laughed. He's a lanky, good-looking dude. He wears low-riding, baggy jeans and long t-shirts with hip-hop singers across the front. He has big brown eyes and keeps his black hair shaved close to his head. He's a good guy, except his laugh is too loud, which gets me in trouble a lot. I suddenly realized Mrs. Hardesty had her beady little black eagle eyes on me. Is something funny, Michael? She asked. I shrugged. Would you like to share it with the whole class? I shrugged again. Whatever. I should have just said sorry or something. Why do I always look for trouble with her? Maybe because she's always on my case? She stared at me with that cold expression, her face frozen like a statue. Mrs. Hardesty looks a lot like a bird, with tiny round eyes pushed up against a long, beaky nose. She has short, feathery, white blonde hair that puffs up around her pale, narrow face. Would you care to tell the class what you think the Loch Ness Monster looks like, Michael? Well, it looks a lot like Duane, except it's prettier. That got everyone laughing, except for Mrs. Hardesty. She wrinkled her nose and made that sniffing sound she always makes when she's unhappy about something. She held up a large photograph. This is a photo of the Loch Ness Monster, she said. She moved it from side to side, but it was really hard to see in the dim light. She always keeps it dark in the room. Kids are always stumbling over their backpacks. When we take tests, we have to hold the paper up close to our faces to read it. It was a bright, sunny day outside, but the shades were down and the ceiling lights were dim as usual. As you can see, the monster looks a lot like a dinosaur, Mrs. Hardesty continued. A lot of people claim this photo is a fake. People don't want to believe in monsters. I reached into my jeans pocket and pulled out my silver dog whistle. But hundreds of people visit the lake in Scotland every year, Mrs. H said. They want to see the monster for themselves. Kids gasped in surprise as one of the window shades shot up with a loud snap. Sunlight poured into the room. Mrs. Hardesty shielded her eyes. She edged sideways to the window and tugged the shade back down. The room grew dark again. Mrs. Hardesty picked up her lucky rabbit's foot from the desk. She always squeezes it in her hand when she gets tense, which means she squeezes it a lot. Many other water monsters have been spotted over the centuries, she said. In ancient times, sailors believed in sea serpents and snap! The same window shade zipped back up to the top. <gasps> Mrs. H gasped and dove to the window. She tugged it down and held it there for a few seconds. Then she returned to the front of her desk, rolling the rabbit's foot in her hand. Snap! The shade flipped back up. Everyone laughed. Sunlight poured over the front of the room. I hid the dog whistle under my desk. She hadn't seen me blow it. She had no idea what a mechanical genius Michael Monroe is. Yeah, I'm real good with tech stuff. People don't expect it, because I'm Monster, the big hulk of a dude who is always getting into trouble. But I've got a lot of skill with computers and all kinds of tech stuff. Before class, I rigged the window shade. I put a tiny receiver on it. The dog whistle sent high-pitched sound waves to the receiver. Sound waves that humans can't hear. And the sound made the window shade go flying up. Snap! I did it again, just to upset Mrs. H and get everyone laughing. Then I hid the whistle behind my textbook. Mrs. Hardesty scratched her head. Why does that shade keep going up? She asked. Maybe an evil spirit is doing it, Dwayne said. He knew I was doing it, but he liked to torture her too. Ooh! He made a nice ghost howl. Mrs. Hardesty's mouth dropped open. She didn't think it was funny. She was squeezing that lucky rabbit's foot flat. One should never joke about evil spirits, she said. Her voice trembled. She kept a jar of black powder on her desk. She reached into the jar, pulled out a handful, and tossed it over her shoulder. Is she the weirdest teacher on earth or what? We're always trying to figure out what the black powder is. Daisy thinks it's ground up bat wings. Dwayne says it's powdered eye of newt. He learned about eye of newt in one of the scary books he's always reading. Mrs. Hardesty tugged the window shade down and examined it carefully. I hoped she wouldn't spot the little receiver I'd planted there. She returned to the front of the class. I raised my dog whistle and prepared to blow it again. Oops! The whistle slipped out of my hand. I made a wild grab for it, but it bounced off my desk, hit the floor, and rolled halfway to Mrs. Hardesty. Did she see it? Yes. She squinted at it, then raised her eyes to me. Uh, am I in trouble? I asked. 
Chapter 3 Yes, I was in trouble. She made me come back to class after school. Outside, rain clouds covered the sky. That made the classroom even darker than before. Mrs. Hardesty had two tall white candles flickering on her desk. She was leaning over them, whispering to herself when I dragged myself in. Mrs. Hardesty, I'm sorry about the whistle thing, I said, but I can't stay after school. She kept whispering for a long while, her eyes shut. The candle smoke floated over her face, but she didn't seem to mind it. Finally, she looked up at me. Her skin appeared gray and powdery in the candlelight. Of course you will stay, Michael. No, really, I said. I can't. I'll miss wrestling practice. Monster Monroe is the captain of the wrestling team. Who else? Sit down, Michael, Mrs. H said. She pointed to a chair. I want you to wrestle with your thoughts. I let out a groan. I can't go to practice. She reached into her jar and tossed a little black powder over her shoulder. Sit down, she said. I sat down. I threw my backpack angrily to the floor. I muttered some bad words under my breath. I had that burning feeling in my chest. The feeling I get when someone is making me really mad. Mrs. Hardesty blew out the candles. She seemed to inhale the smoke. Michael, do you think it's smart to make a fool of your teacher? She asked. I really didn't have to try, I blurted out. Oops, I did it again. Why can't I ever shut my trap? I heard kids burst out laughing in the hall. I knew it was Daisy and Duane. Mrs. Hardesty leaped up from behind her desk. She strode to the classroom door and dragged my two friends in. Duane plopped down next to me, shaking his head. Daisy didn't look too happy either. She never gets in trouble. She has this cute, innocent look. Curly, carrot-colored hair, lots of freckles, and dimples in her cheeks, even when she isn't smiling. So everyone thinks she's totally sweet and adorable. Of course, I know better. I know she has a wicked cold sense of humor. She could be a big problem child like me, if she put her mind to it. We didn't do anything, Daisy told Mrs. Hardesty. Why do we have to stay? The teacher waved for Daisy to sit down. Then she frowned at us one by one. You three need an attitude change, she said. She rubbed her pointed chin. I think I know what will help. Me too, I said. Wrestling practice will help me. It'll change my attitude, really. Dwayne grinned at Mrs. Hardesty. I got an A in attitude last semester, he said. You can check it out. Mrs. Hardesty rolled her eyes. We don't grade for attitude, she muttered. Dwayne squinted at her. You sure? He was goofing on her, but she never got a joke. I know what will help you, Mrs. H repeated. Some honest work. Aww. All three of us groaned. I'll give you a choice, she said. You can stay two hours after school every day for a week. Aww. We groaned again, louder. Or you can do some community service, Mrs. H said. We stared blankly at her. I had a sudden urge to take out my dog whistle and make the shade fly up again. I have a project that's perfect for you three, Mrs. Hardesty said. It's in the lot right by my house. You can come on Saturday. I can't, I said. My dad is taking me to the big computer tech show. I can't, Daisy said. I have my tennis lesson and... Saturday, Mrs. Hardesty insisted. No excuses. I heard a cough behind us. I turned and saw Mr. Wong step into the room. Mr. Wong is our new principal. He's a little weird looking. He's not old, but he has these sagging cheeks and bulging eyes that make him look like a frog. I'll bet his nickname was Froggy or Toad Boy when he was a kid. He wears dark pinstriped suits, white shirts, and dark ties. He's a short dude, but he has a deep, booming voice. Kind of like a bullfrog, but he's a good guy. We never saw our old principal. She never came out of her office. Mr. Wong is always out in the hall, greeting everyone and slapping high fives. He likes hanging out with us. Mr. Wong pulled Mrs. Hardesty aside and asked what was going on. He kept glancing at the three of us. Mrs. Hardesty had a frown on her face and kept pointing a long, bony finger at me. I couldn't hear everything they said, but I heard Mr. Wong say, I think you're being too hard on them. They were only having a little fun. I told you, the Wongster is a good dude. But Mrs. Hardesty kept shaking her head, making her feathery hair bounce up and down. Finally, Mr. Wong shrugged his shoulders and stepped back, defeated. Mrs. Hardesty turned to us. You three will show up for community service at two o'clock on Saturday. 
No excuses. We will meet at my house. She walked back to her desk and started piling up papers. Mr. Wong walked up to us. My house is right down the street from hers, he whispered. I'll come out and check on how you're doing. He turned and left the room. The three of us started complaining to each other. Listen up, Mrs. Hardesty said. This is important. Be sure to wear work clothes on Saturday. And you'd better bring nose plugs. Huh? Nose plugs? What did she want us to do on Saturday? Chapter 4 Saturday was supposed to be totally fun. Dad promised to take me to the computer tech show at the convention center. I waited all year for this show. But where was I on Saturday afternoon? Standing with Daisy and Dwayne in back of Mrs. Hardesty's house. It was a warm, sunny day, with a few white puffy clouds floating in a clear blue sky. But I didn't care. I was really, really angry. I wanted to toss back my head and roar, and then start heaving things through Mrs. Hardesty's window. Instead, I followed my friends as Mrs. H led us to the abandoned lot. The warm air started to smell. A really gross, sick smell. She stopped at a huge dumpster. A garbage dumpster that stunk to high heaven. I need you to go through the garbage, Mrs. H said, and pull out all the cans and bottles that can be recycled. Whoa! Dwayne staggered back. Excuse me? I said to Mrs. H. You want us to climb into the garbage? I thought I made it clear, she replied. Daisy held her nose. She looked a little green. This is your community service, Mrs. Hardesty said. Climb in. Dig through the garbage. Find all the cans, bottles, and jars you can. But it stinks, Dwayne cried. It's putrid. It's sickening. Mrs. Hardesty handed us each a long-handled shovel. Good hunting, she said. But, but, I sputtered. She trotted back to her house. Daisy, Dwayne, and I stared at each other. Did we have a choice? I didn't think so. A minute later, we were standing up to our knees in wet, putrid, slimy garbage. The gunk soaked the legs of my jeans. The skunky aroma made my throat tighten up. I struggled not to choke. I tried to walk. It was hard to balance. After a step or two, something squished under my sneaker. A dead raccoon! I don't believe this! I screamed. This is totally unfair! I lost it. I began to grab garbage and heave it at the walls of the dumpster. This wild picture flashed into my mind. I saw myself lifting the whole dumpster, like Superman, and emptying the garbage into Mrs. Hardesty's front window. No way! No way! I screamed, heaving garbage all over the place. Daisy grabbed one shoulder, Dwayne grabbed the other. Easy, monster. Take it easy, dude, Dwayne said softly. They were trying to hold me in place, but I lunged forward and broke free, and fell face down into the wet garbage. I felt something ooze over my face. Something very wet and smelly soaked my t-shirt. I sat up on the dumpster floor, sputtering and shaking eggshells and rotten chunks of maggoty meat from my hair. I tried to wipe the green, moldy goop off my face, but it stuck there. Finally, my friends pulled me to my feet. Duane handed me my shovel. Feeling better? I laughed. Suddenly all three of us were laughing. We started to shovel up garbage. We didn't find many bottles or cans. Most people don't throw them in with the garbage, but we kept searching through the yucky muck. Mrs. Hardesty knew there wasn't much here to recycle, I said. She put us in here just to be mean. Ah! Daisy let out a scream. She started beating the garbage frantically with the head of her shovel. There's something alive down there! She wailed. Bam! 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 Yes, she was right. Something down low in the dumpster was making the garbage bubble up. Duane and I grabbed Daisy, and we helped lower her from the dumpster. We followed her down to the ground and tossed our shovels away. Hey! I let out a startled cry. Mr. Wong was standing there. Even though it was Saturday, he was dressed in one of his striped suits and a brown necktie. His slicked-down black hair gleamed in the sunlight. His froggy eyes were soft and watery. He had a smile on his face, but it disappeared when he saw the three of us covered in wet chunks of garbage. He held his nose for a minute. I didn't blame him. I could smell myself. Believe me, it wasn't pretty. Nice job, guys, he said, still holding his nose. Here, 
I brought you candy bars. For energy. He handed us each a chocolate bar. Then, he pulled out a wad of paper towels from his jacket pocket. Here, you can wipe some of the garbage off. We thanked him. He hurried away, running, not walking. Our smell was making him sick. I used a paper towel to wipe sticky stuff off my forehead. My jeans and t-shirt were soaked through and stained. My back itched. Garbage bugs had climbed under my shirt. Daisy and Duane were muttering to each other. I couldn't hear them. My ears were ringing. That happens a lot when I'm really angry. I'm gonna take a two-hour shower, Duane said. Daisy pulled a brown hunk of lettuce from her hair. The lettuce was covered with tiny brown worms. The next time my mom asks me to take out the garbage, I'll probably go berserk, she said. I clenched my teeth. I stared at Mrs. Hardesty's house. I'm gonna pay her back, I said. This was totally mean and unfair. I'm gonna find a way to pay her back. But how? We said goodbye. We headed off in different directions to our houses. I was slinking home through backyards, trying to stay in the shadows. I didn't want anyone to see me, or smell me. I saw something move. I stopped. Between two houses, a black cat. It was sitting very still now, staring at me with big blue eyes. More bad luck? No. No way. Suddenly, I knew just how I was going to get my revenge. Chapter 5 And that's how Daisy, Dwayne, and I ended up sneaking into Mrs. Hardesty's house with the black cat. My two friends didn't really want to do it. Sneaking into a teacher's house is kind of scary, but it didn't take much to convince them. Daisy had shampooed her hair ten times, but it still had bugs crawling in it. And Dwayne said he had to throw out his jeans and t-shirt. His mother refused to wash anything that smelly. So we all had a good reason for getting even with Mrs. Hardesty. We knew how superstitious she was. She talked all the time about how black cats really do bring bad luck. She told us that once you have the bad luck, it's hard to shake it off. So what could be better? A black cat suddenly appears in her basement, and she freaks! She totally freaks! The black cat was always around our neighborhood. No one knew who it belonged to. I think it had a hundred and nine lives. I saw it wherever I went. So we gathered up the cat and hurried to Mrs. Hardesty's house after school. We knew she was staying late for some parent meetings. We made sure her blue Civic wasn't in the driveway and none of the neighbors were watching. The back door was unlocked. We walked right into the kitchen, down to the basement. We tried to be as silent as possible. The cat kept pacing back and forth inside the carrier. We planned to be fast. Get in, free the cat, get out. But it didn't work that way. We heard thumps and moans and groans coming from one of the rooms. My heart did a flip-flop in my chest. Someone else was down there. We stumbled up the stairs as fast as we could. Something fell out of my jeans pocket, but I didn't go back for it. The cat was meowing like crazy. We made it back upstairs, breathing hard. Were we being chased? I turned and stared down into the dark basement. No, no one on the stairs. I gripped the basement door and leaned against it, waiting for my heart to stop pounding. It's okay, I finally said. We're okay. Daisy glanced around. Let the cat out, she told Dwayne, and let's go. Dwayne set the carrying case on the floor. He reached for the clasp. No, wait, I said. The attic. Let's take it up to the attic. They both squinted at me. Why? It'll be scarier, I said. Think about it. Mrs. H is sitting in the living room. She hears something creeping down the attic stairs. She opens the attic door. And there is bad luck staring her in the face. I laughed. I could just picture it. Duane shook his head. Monster, you are too bad, he said. Too stupid, Daisy muttered. I can't believe I'm doing this. If we get caught... She shivered, then hugged herself. We won't get caught, I said. I glanced out the front window. No sign of the teacher's car. You know how long those parent meetings take. We have all afternoon. We had to explore a little to find the attic steps. 
The door stood at the end of the hall next to Mrs. Hardesty's bedroom. We opened the door. The attic was pitch black. As we climbed, the air grew warmer. It smelled stale, kind of musty. The cat thumped the side of the carrier. It was eager to get out. I stepped into the attic. It was huge. The walls were knotty pine. Two tiny windows faced the front. They let in narrow beams of light. The attic was filled with furniture covered with bed sheets. An old typewriter and a black plastic radio sat on a wooden crate. A long brown leather couch stood sideways in the middle of the floor. The sheet had fallen off one side of it. Something big and tall and almost round stood near us at the top of the stairs. It was totally covered by a sheet. It was at least six feet tall. What could it be? Some kind of sculpture? I started to lift the sheet to take a peek, but Daisy pulled me away. No time to sightsee, she whispered. It's hot up here. Let's hurry. Dwayne set the carrier down in front of the long couch. He opened the front. The cat stepped out quickly. It took three or four steps, then stretched its legs, tilting its head from side to side. It glanced around the long room for a few seconds. Then it just stood there, staring up at us with its blue eyes. Mission accomplished, I said. This is way perfect. I can't wait. That's when I heard the car door slam outside. My mouth dropped open. I saw Daisy's eyes go wide. The three of us froze. So did the cat. I dove to one of the tiny windows and peered down at the driveway. I groaned. Oh, wow. It's Mrs. Hardesty. She's home. Duane looked sick. Daisy let out a cry. How do we get out of here? I watched Mrs. H step up to her front door. We're kind of trapped, I said. Chapter 6 We heard the front door open and close. We heard Mrs. Hardesty step into the front hall. She coughed, muttered something to herself. I could hear every sound. It was as if I suddenly had super hearing. If she catches us, we're dead meat, Daisy whispered. Dwayne swallowed. Think we'll be suspended from school? She'll probably put us in front of a firing squad, Daisy said. Bad attitude, I said. We'll get out of this. I always try to look on the bright side, even when I'm doomed. I gazed around the attic. No back door. No escape route. If we started down the stairs now, she'd see us. Could we climb out a window and lower ourselves to the ground? No, the windows were too small. I waved the others behind the long couch. We crouched down on our hands and knees. Where was the cat? I poked my head out and searched. No sign of it. Was it already heading down the stairs? That could be trouble. I pressed my side against the back of the couch and listened. I couldn't hear Mrs. Hardesty. The only sound I heard was my own heavy breathing. Then I heard water running, probably from the kitchen sink. It stopped. I could hear Mrs. Hardesty humming to herself. Then I heard footsteps growing louder. She's coming upstairs, Daisy whispered, probably to her bedroom to change out of her school clothes. Dwayne snickered. Do teachers have school clothes? Shh. Daisy gave Dwayne a shove. Want her to hear you? She whispered. More footsteps. Mrs. Hardesty coughed again. The sound floated up the attic stairs. She was too close, too close to us now. One sound, and she'd know someone was up there. I held my breath. All three of us froze. That's when the cat decided to meow. A long, shrill cry. I gasped and shut my eyes. Doomed. Doomed. I opened my eyes and saw the cat sitting beside me. Shh, I whispered. Do cats understand what shh means? I wrapped both arms around the cat and pulled it close to my chest. I held it there, praying it wouldn't make another sound. <coughs> another long howl. I gritted my teeth. Duane shut his eyes and crouched with his hands raised in a praying position. Daisy stared straight ahead, and we heard footsteps. The attic stairs creaked. The footsteps were coming closer. We were caught. Mrs. Hardesty was climbing the attic stairs. Chapter 7 I hugged the cat even closer to my chest. Please, I whispered. 
Please be quiet. The attic stairs creaked and groaned. Keeping low, I poked my head out just enough to see. Mrs. Hardesty climbed into the attic. Daisy was right. She had changed her clothes. She was wearing a gray sweatshirt over baggy purple pants. Instead of her black pumps, she wore black sneakers. Please don't meow. Please don't make a sound. I silently begged the cat. Mrs. Hardesty glanced around. She took a few steps toward the couch. She wiped something off the old radio with one hand. Then she moved to a window and peered down at the street. Was it the longest, scariest moment of my life? Yes, but I knew it would get a lot scarier if our teacher caught us there. I heard voices. Some kids playing outside. I wished I was out there with them. I hugged the cat tighter. Was I smothering the poor thing? Mrs. Hardesty moved away from the window. She stepped up to the tall, covered thing by the stairs. Still hugging the cat to my chest, I peeked out from behind the couch. She was pulling the sheet off. After a few seconds, I could see a little bit of what was underneath. It was smooth and white. She tugged the sheet away and folded it neatly. I stared at what she had uncovered, stared at it in disbelief. It was an egg, a six-foot-tall egg. Daisy and Duane were crouched beside me behind the couch. They couldn't see what I was seeing. They stared straight ahead, afraid to breathe. Mrs. Hardesty walked around the egg a few times, inspecting it. She smoothed her hand gently over the shell as she circled it. She had a strange smile on her face. Her eyes sparkled with excitement. What kind of bird or animal could lay an egg that big? I asked myself. A few weeks earlier, I had seen dinosaur eggs on a cool show on the Discovery Channel. They were tiny compared to this giant egg. It can't be real, I decided. It's a sculpture. Yes, that's it. It's a piece of art. Someone made it out of plaster or something. That's why Mrs. Hardesty was acting so proud of it. While those thoughts whirred through my mind, Mrs. H stopped circling. She faced the egg and stretched both arms around its wide middle. Was she hugging it? No. I gasped as she pulled herself off the floor. Her sneakers pushed against the eggshell. She slid her hands higher, higher, and in seconds, she had climbed to the top. Then she turned to face the window. She was sitting on top of the egg. Wow. That shell must be really thick and tough, I thought. I watched her settle herself up there. She lowered her hands beside her on the shell. Daisy and Duane had to see this. Otherwise, they'd think I was making it up. Silently, I crawled backward and made a space for them. Then I waved for them to move and take a look. They didn't make a sound. They poked their heads around the side of the couch. I saw their eyes bulge in shock. They both shook their heads, totally bewildered. I pushed them back so I could see again. My head was spinning. What on earth was our teacher doing up there? Was she hatching the egg? What would come bursting out of it? A giant chicken? How weird is this? She stared out the window. Her hands rested on top of the egg. Her sneakers dangled three feet off the floor. She seemed very comfortable up there. We have to get out of here. That thought repeated in my brain. But how? I was still holding the cat. I glanced down. It had fallen asleep in my arms. Sweet. The cat was one thing I didn't have to worry about. For now. How long would Mrs. H sit on that egg? Till dinner time? Even later? I settled against the back of the couch. I set the cat down on the floor. Then I crossed my arms and waited. My friends didn't move either. I think it was the longest we'd ever sat still. The longest day of my life. Time passed so slowly. The afternoon sun turned red as it lowered in the attic windows. I could see the evening sky and a pale white half moon in the skylight above us. I heard a sound, a soft snore. I peeked around the edge of the couch. Yes! Mrs. H was still sitting on top of the egg, but her head was down and she was snoring softly. She's asleep, I whispered to my friends. 
They both sat forward. Their eyes went wide. Dwayne stretched his arms over his head. Think we can sneak past her? Daisy whispered. It's our only chance, I said. If we wake her up... Dwayne's voice trailed away. I knew it was going to be tough. We had to walk right past the egg to get to the attic stairs. One little sound, one quick move could wake Mrs. Hardesty. And then we'd be caught standing there, seeing her, seeing her hatching a giant egg. What would she do to us? Take off your shoes, I whispered. Don't make a sound. Leaning against the couch back, we tugged off our sneakers. Then, carrying them in front of us, we tiptoed toward the stairs. I led the way, taking one step at a time. The floor squeaked under my foot. I stopped, my eyes on Mrs. Hardesty. She didn't raise her head. I realized I wasn't breathing. I sucked in a deep breath and held it. Then I continued creeping slowly forward, one step at a time. It seemed to take hours. Finally, I was standing in front of the egg. Mrs. Hardesty's knees were inches from my face. Two more steps, and I would reach the top of the stairs. One, two, and a hand grabbed me hard by the shoulder. Chapter 8 I gasped and froze. I turned my head. Daisy! Sorry, she whispered. I started to trip. Her hand slid from my shoulder. My heart was still doing a four-minute mile. On top of the egg, Mrs. Hardesty let out a soft murmur. Was she waking up? Leaning on the banister, I flew down the stairs without looking back. I reached the hall, ran past Mrs. Hardesty's bedroom, and kept going. I heard my two friends close behind me. We stopped at the kitchen door and listened. No sounds from upstairs. Maybe Mrs. H was still sleeping. We burst outside into the cool evening air. The sun was nearly down, just a red stripe behind the houses. The trees fluttered in gusts of wind. We didn't say a word. We ran through several backyards, then an empty lot. I stopped running at the traffic light on the corner of my block. I pressed my hands against my knees, waiting to catch my breath. Dwayne kept glancing behind him. The air was cold, but his face was drenched with sweat. What should we do now? He asked. We have to tell someone what we saw, Daisy said. She gripped a street light. She looked pale in the white light. All of her freckles had disappeared. Who can we tell? I asked, standing up. I felt a little dizzy. And what could we say? That we saw Mrs. Hardesty hatching a giant egg? Think people would laugh at us? Dwayne asked. Yeah, I think so, I said. We should tell Mr. Wong, Daisy said. He'd listen to us. He'd listen to us, I said, but he wouldn't believe us. I'm not sure I believe it. We stared at each other. A dark SUV rolled past with loud music blasting out the windows. Kids waved to us from the back. We didn't wave back. Let's go home and just think about this, Dwayne said. Daisy shuddered. I won't be able to think about anything else, she said. Wait, I've got it, Dwayne cried. He tapped his head. The great brain strikes again. I squinted at him. What have you got? I asked. I can explain it, he said. I can explain everything. Spill, Daisy said. She turned to me. This should be good. Mrs. Hardesty saw us, Dwayne said. She knew we were hiding behind the couch. So she climbed up on the egg and pretended to be hatching it just to freak us out. I shook my head. It was all a joke? Then explain this. Why does she have a giant egg in her attic? In case some kids sneak up there and hide behind her couch? And why did she fall asleep if she was goofing on us? Daisy asked. And why did she let us get away so easily? Dwayne shrugged. Do you think I know everything? My stomach growled. Let's go home, I said. We're late for dinner. Let's go home and think about this. Catch you later. We headed off in different directions. Mom greeted me at the kitchen door. Michael, 
You're so late, she said. Where were you? Uh, wrestling practice, I said. I got to school a little late the next morning. I dumped my jacket in my locker and looked for Daisy and Duane. No sign of them. I guess they were already in class. Yo, monster! A guy from the wrestling team flashed me a thumbs up. I turned a corner and bumped into Mr. Wong. He was in his usual pinstriped suit, but today he wore a bright red tie. Very bold. Michael, what's up? He asked, grinning at me. How are things going? Should I tell him? My friends and I saw something way weird, Mr. Wong. We saw Mrs. Hardesty climb up on a giant egg and try to hatch it. No, no way, I couldn't say it. Things are okay, I guess, I said. He was so short, he reached up to put a hand on my shoulder. If you have any problems, you come to me, he said, and we'll talk about it, okay? My door is always open. I nodded. Thanks, I muttered. I didn't know what else to say. He hurried away. I stood there and watched him bounce down the hall. Weird, I thought. Does he suspect that something is wrong with Mrs. Hardesty? Is that why he said that to me? I started to walk into class, but Mrs. Hardesty stopped me at the door. She led me back into the hall and closed the door behind us. Her tiny round eyes stared into mine. Is anything wrong? I asked. I tried to keep my voice calm and normal. She didn't answer. Just kept staring at me. I gazed right back at her. If she wanted a staring contest, I was up for it. I've never lost a staring contest in my life. I once stared so long and hard at Dwayne, he went cross-eyed. I found something in my house last night, Mrs. H said finally. She blinked. I won the contest. I found a black cat in my bedroom, she said. Her teeth were clenched tight. Her cheeks turned red. Really? I said. Black cats are bad luck, aren't they? Was she buying my innocent act? I stayed up all night, Michael, she said. All night trying to rid my house of the bad luck. I didn't reply. She brought her face close to mine. So close I could smell the coffee on her breath. Did you have anything to do with that, Michael? She asked. She said my name as if it was something disgusting. I backed up against the tile wall. She kept her face right above mine. Michael, tell me the truth. Did you have something to do with bringing that bad luck cat into my house? No way, I said. Of course not. Her eyes, cold as ice, sent a chill rolling down my back. She is dangerous, I decided. Why was she standing so close? Why was she staring so hard? Was she trying to read my mind? I have to tell someone about her, I thought. I have to get proof so they will believe me. I have to find out what she's hatching in her attic. I suddenly realized I had no choice. I had to sneak back up to that attic to see what came crawling out of that egg. Chapter 9 No way, Daisy said. Ditto, Duane said. I had to chase them down the street. You won't come back to the attic with me? Do I look like I'm crazy? Daisy asked. Don't answer that. Monster, it's not our business, Duane said. If Mrs. H wants to hatch giant chickens in her attic, that's her problem. But, but, I sputtered. I couldn't believe my friends were refusing to come along with me. You're the giant chickens, I said. They both nodded. You got that right, Duane said. But don't you want to know the truth? I asked. Don't you want to be able to prove to people how crazy she is? Duane lifted two fingers to his ear. Call me, he said. Call me later and tell me what you found. Yeah, call me too, Daisy said. Long distance. I'm never going near that house again. They trotted away, which is why I ended up in Mrs. Hardesty's attic that afternoon all by myself. The back door was unlocked, just like before. I sneaked into the house and made my way up to the attic without stopping. I didn't see any sign of the black cat. It was probably back outside, prowling the neighborhood. Dark storm clouds hung low in the sky. 
the attic was even darker than before. I stood beside the egg, waiting for my eyes to adjust. Should I lift the sheet? I wanted to feel the egg. Was it warm or cold? Did it feel like a regular eggshell? Could I feel a giant chicken growing inside it? I gripped the sheet and started to pull. No, I changed my mind. Mrs. Hardesty might notice that it was moved. I let go of the sheet and crossed the room. Dropping down behind the couch, I prepared to wait. This time, I brought two chocolate bars so I wouldn't starve. I was half finished with the second bar when I heard a car door slam out in the driveway. A few seconds later, I heard the front door open and close. My heart started to pound. My hands were suddenly cold and sweaty. I jammed the rest of the candy bar into my backpack. Then I pressed my back against the couch and made myself comfortable. After a short while, I heard Mrs. Hardesty climb the stairs to her room. She was in there a long time. I could hear her walking around. Maybe she isn't coming up to the attic today, I thought. Maybe I sneaked up here for nothing. But no. After a few more minutes, I heard the attic door open. Then I heard Mrs. Hardesty's footsteps on the creaking wooden stairs. I stayed frozen behind the couch until she stepped into the attic. Then I poked my head out just enough to see her. She had changed into the same gray sweatshirt and loose-fitting purple pants. She had her back to me. She was tugging the sheet off the egg. She folded it up and set it aside on the floor. Then, once again, she circled the egg slowly, running her open hand along the fat middle of the shell. I kept blinking in the gray light of the attic. I still couldn't believe what I was seeing. Will she hatch the egg today? Will it ever hatch? I had this sudden impulse, a crazy thought. I pictured myself climbing out from behind the couch, walking over to her, very casual-like, my hands in my pockets, a big smile on my face, and I'd say, Hey, Mrs. H, what's up with that big egg? What have you got going on there? And then I'd click a photo with my cell phone. Luckily, I held myself back. I mean, a dude could get in trouble for sneaking into a teacher's house especially if the teacher had a big secret to keep. So I stayed on my hands and knees, kept myself as low to the floor as possible, and I stared in silence as my teacher climbed the egg once again and perched on top. She sat up there a long time without moving. I didn't move either. My arms were getting sore, and my neck felt stiff. Raindrops pattered the roof, and I heard thunder in the distance. The sky darkened to black, and the blackness seeped into the attic. I hunched there, squinting through the dim light, watching, waiting, watching. My head jerked back when I heard the loud crack. My muscles tightened. I blinked several times, trying to wake myself up. Another crack! Louder this time. Mrs. Hardesty's eyes bulged, and a smile spread over her face. She turned her body around, wrapped her arms around the shell, and slid down to the floor. Crack! Mrs. Hardesty pumped her fists in the air. She let out a happy cheer. I could see that she was very excited. I heard more cracking sounds, some soft thuds, a tap, tap, tap sound like a hammer against wood. A tiny wedge of the shell poked open and fell to the floor. I held my breath. It was so hard to stay still. This was the big moment. Another long crack! Another section of eggshell dropped off the egg. I could see yellow, yolky stuff inside. And then, then, I slapped my hand over my mouth to keep from making a sound. And I stared in shock as a glistening, wet, green arm poked out of the egg, dripping with yolk slime. The scaly arm stretched itself out, then curled and uncurled its pointed claw. Chapter 10 I couldn't breathe. I couldn't blink. The shell cracked open. Yellow goo drained onto the floor and formed a wide puddle at Mrs. Hardesty's feet. 
She had this strange smile frozen on her face. Her eyes flashed with excitement. As I stared in shock, she grabbed the wet green arm. Gently, she wrapped her fingers around its bony claw and tugged. I almost screamed as the creature came tumbling out of the egg. It was big, as big as my neighbor's Labrador Retriever. It had bumpy green skin covered in thick slime, like a layer of yellow mucus. The skin reminded me of alligator skin, or maybe lizard skin. It made loud, disgusting, choking noises as it tried to breathe. It opened up its long snout and coughed up huge balls of yellow snot. Its round, black eyes rolled crazily in its thin, lizardy head. It coughed up more snot balls and sent them plopping at Mrs. Hardesty's feet. The creature stood awkwardly on its hind legs. The legs were short, like alligator legs. But the creature had a long, bumpy body and a large, smooth head with a long snout. It stretched its front legs out. It curled and uncurled its claws. Its slime-covered head tilted and turned as it gazed around the attic. Then, with a hoarse cry, it stumbled back into the shell. Mrs. Hardesty reached out both hands and tugged it out onto its feet. The creature opened its long snout and whimpered, like a baby. This isn't happening, I told myself. I'm not hunched here on my hands and knees in my teacher's attic, watching her hatch a giant green monster. It tossed back its head and uttered more choking sounds. Easy, my little baby, Mrs. Hardesty said softly. Easy, let Mama help you. She picked up a bath towel and began to wipe the thick mucus off the creature's back. There, there, little baby. Little baby? She was very gentle with it. It took four towels to wipe all the sticky goo off its body. She carefully wiped its legs, its claws, and its tiny black nails. It ooed and cooed as she toweled it down. It snapped its jaws in the air, testing them out, I guess. I couldn't believe it. It already had teeth. Stand still, my little baby, Mrs. Hardesty whispered. She gently plucked a big piece of eggshell off the monster's back. Then she toweled it some more. She petted its smooth head for a minute or two and talked baby talk to it. I almost hurled when she said, Okay, little baby, give Mama a kiss. A snaky black tongue slid out of its mouth. Mrs. Hardesty leaned forward and gave the creature a big, wet kiss. Smack, smack. Oh, gross! Could it be any more sick? You're going to be a good boy, Mrs. Hardesty said. She petted its head some more. You love your mama, don't you? You're not like those nasty students. Oh, wow. I didn't want to hear any more of it. I wanted to get out of there. I was desperate to tell everyone what was going on here. My arms and legs were numb from not moving all that time. My back ached. My brain was spinning. I peeked out from behind the couch. Mrs. Hardesty had the monster by the claw. She tugged it forward slowly. She was guiding it down the attic stairs. It coughed up a snot ball and sent it sailing onto the wall. Its legs moved awkwardly. Its big body bumped the stair railing. Where was she taking it? They were climbing down the stairs one at a time. When her head disappeared from view, I crawled out from my hiding place. Did I dare follow her? I had to. I had to know where she planned to keep the thing. I got to my feet. My legs were totally numb. I stretched, trying to get my blood flowing again. Silently, I tiptoed to the stairs. I held my breath. Moving slowly, carefully, I began to follow them. I've got you! Mrs. Hardesty cried. Chapter 11 I gasped and grabbed the banister to keep from falling. It took me several seconds to realize she was talking to the baby monster, 
Not to me. I forced myself to breathe again. I waited for my heart to stop pounding against my chest. They were out of my sight, already in the second floor hallway. I made my way down the attic stairs and peered into the hall. She was leading it down to the first floor. The monster was walking more steadily now. Mrs. Hardesty gripped its claw in one hand and kept talking gently to it. I couldn't hear what she was saying. I knew it was probably more goo-goo baby talk. Yucko! I stayed back, waiting for them to go down the stairs. I pressed myself against the wall and hid in the shadows. Finally, it was safe to move again. By the time I reached the kitchen, Mrs. Hardesty was already taking the monster downstairs. To the basement. I stepped into the doorway. The basement stairs were dark. But if she turned around, she'd see me. She didn't turn around. I remembered that her basement was divided into two rooms. She took the monster to the door on the right. She fumbled around in her pants pocket, then pulled out a key. I crept down one step, then one more. I couldn't get too close, but I had to see what she was doing with the creature. I tried one more step. It squeaked loudly under my feet. I froze. Did Mrs. Hardesty hear it? No. She unlocked the door and pulled it open. Oh, wow. I saw a dimly lit room and... and... at least a dozen green monsters! All of them stood on their hind legs. All of them turned to watch Mrs. Hardesty bring in the new baby. Mrs. Hardesty stepped into the room. They lumbered forward to greet her, grunting and mewing. Hello, my babies. My cute babies. She exclaimed, Cute babies? They were even taller than Mrs. Hardesty. Their dark green bodies were scaly and lizardy. Their jaws snapped excitedly. How are all my little babies? Mrs. Hardesty asked. She used a tender voice I'd never heard in class. The monsters formed a circle around her. One of them stuck its black snake tongue out and licked her face. She laughed. Sweet, sweet. Then her smile faded. Soon, I will not have to hide you away down here, she told them. Soon, there will be more of us than of them. What was she talking about? More monsters than humans? A chill ran down my back. What was she planning to do with these monsters she was hatching? I made a promise to Commander Zanks, Mrs. Hardesty said. We will succeed in our mission. We will take over this planet, and we will triumph over the weak Earthlings. I shook my head hard. This was too disturbing. It was like I couldn't take it all in. I recognized all the words she said, but they didn't make sense to me. She couldn't be saying what I thought she was saying. Was Mrs. Hardesty an alien? From another planet? Sent here by some alien commander with a name no human could pronounce? And was she planning a war? Monsters against humans? No, please, no. If it was true, I was the only human on Earth who knew about it. The only human on Earth who could stop her. But whoa, wait, I'm big and I'm strong, but I'm just a 12-year-old kid. If I was going to stop Mrs. Hardesty and her monster war, I was going to need help. A lot of help. I stared into the room. The monsters had closed in on Mrs. Hardesty. One of them was licking her face. Another green, scaly beast was licking the back of her hand. Two of them had their front legs around her shoulders and were hugging her. And she kept cooing to them and saying, My babies, my babies. I had to get away from there. I had to tell someone, everyone. The main thing was to escape this house without being caught. I turned. I gripped the banister. I started to climb the stairs. I made it up three steps, and then I couldn't help it. I sneezed. Achoo! Chapter 12 Caught! There was no way she didn't hear that. It wasn't a quiet sneeze. I never learned how to sneeze quietly. I swallowed hard and held my breath. 
I stood there with one foot on one step, the other beneath it on a lower step. I froze there, every muscle tensed, and shut my eyes. I waited for her to call me down there. But no, I heard her gooey sweet voice. Does one of my babies have a cold? I let my breath out slowly. She thought one of the monsters had sneezed. I turned back to the room. Through the open door, I saw Mrs. Hardesty walk to a refrigerator against the back wall. Are my babies hungry? Are you ready for Din Din? This got them all excited. They began huffing and puffing and jumping up and down. Two of them got into a headbutting contest. Each time their heads collided, it made a wet smack. Mrs. Hardesty pulled open the fridge door and leaned inside. She came out with big hunks of red, raw meat. She tossed the meat chunks high in the air. They landed on the floor. The excited monsters dove headfirst for them. They scrambled for the meat, headbutted and shoved, and tackled each other out of the way. The smack of their bodies rang out over the sick, gobbling and slurping. They sucked the meat chunks into their open mouths and swallowed them whole. Then they tossed back their heads, opened their mouths wide, and let out deafening two and three minute burps. As the monsters devoured the meat, Mrs. Hardesty stepped to the side. She crossed her arms in front of her and watched. She had an adoring smile pasted on her face. She actually thought these slobbering, burping beasts were cute. A few minutes later, the meat was gone. The last monster finished his roaring burp. The basement room grew quiet. Mrs. Hardesty stepped forward. Okay, my babies, she said. Listen up now. I want you to lay more eggs. The creatures stood at attention. Their eyes locked on her. A short chubby one made a gurgling noise and vomited up his meat onto the floor. He bent down and quickly ate it a second time. Lay more eggs, Mrs. H told them. We will use some of them to hatch more babies. And I will feed some of the eggs to the kids at my school, then to the whole town, and then... Monsters rule! Monsters rule! Monsters rule! Her chant got the monsters all psyched. They nodded their heads up and down. They danced as if getting ready for battle. A few of them did some more headbutting. The commander will be proud, Mrs. Hardesty shouted, pumping a fist in the air. We will take over this puny planet, or my name isn't Hyborg Xerxes! The monsters were pumped. They roared and hopped up and down. Oh, wow, I murmured. Oh, wow. Mrs. Hardesty wasn't really Mrs. Hardesty. She had a weird alien name because she was an alien. An alien who came to Earth to get rid of humans and make a home for these ugly monsters. I spun around and ran up the basement stairs as fast as I could. The monsters were making such a racket down there, I knew Mrs. H couldn't hear me. My legs felt rubbery and weak. My heart was thumping in my chest. But I ran out the back door and kept running. I had to tell everyone. I had to warn everyone. We were all in danger. A horn honked and tires squealed as I ran across the street. I hadn't even looked to see if anyone was coming. I heard the driver shout at me from his open window, but I didn't stop. The houses and yards were a blur. I ran all the way home. Mrs. Hardesty's cheer rang in my ears. Monsters rule! Monsters rule! I saw her pumping her fist in the air as the monsters bounced up and down. Monsters rule! Monsters rule! No way, I told myself. I burst in through the back door. Mom and Dad were standing in the kitchen. Dad was chopping onions at the table. His face was red, and tears rolled down his cheeks. Mom was stirring a pot on the stove. They turned when I came roaring in. Michael? Where have you been? Dad asked through his tears. I struggled to catch my breath. I was at Mrs. Hardesty's, I choked out. Mom! Dad! She's hatching big green monsters! She keeps them in her basement! She's going to turn everyone in town into monsters! Dad set down the onions. He blinked at me. That's pretty serious, Michael, 
he said. Let's get the police over there and put an end to this. Chapter 13 Dad's onion tears rolled down his cheeks, and he laughed. Mom laughed, too. I stood there, still breathing hard, my legs trembling. I gritted my teeth and watched them laugh at me. Michael, we know you don't like your teacher, Mom said finally. And yes, I'll admit she's a little different. But there's no point in making up crazy stories about her, Dad said. Mom tapped me on the head with her long wooden spoon. Good imagination, she said. Why don't you sit down at your computer and write up that story, Dad added. Maybe you're going to be a science fiction writer. Ah! I let out an angry cry. It's not science fiction, I screamed. It's real! I could feel myself start to lose it. I almost grabbed the spoon out of Mom's hand and tossed it out the window. Almost. I caught myself just in time. I balled my hands into tight fists at my sides and stomped out of the kitchen. When those disgusting monsters and Mrs. H and her commander ran the world, it wouldn't be so funny, would it? I stormed into my room and slammed the door behind me. I tossed my backpack onto the bed and started pacing furiously back and forth. Who would believe me? Would Daisy and Dwayne believe me? Maybe. But who cared? They couldn't help. I needed to find somebody who could stop Mrs. Hardesty. Mr. Wong? Maybe. The town police? Maybe. The National Guard unit my cousin Brad is in? Maybe. But they wouldn't believe me either. No one would believe me. Unless I had proof. I banged my forehead against the wall. I had my cell phone with me in the attic. Why didn't I take pictures? Why? Now I knew what I had to do. I had to go back there and take good, clear pictures of those monsters. Then people would have to believe me. I shuddered. I had no choice. I was the only one in the world who knew about Mrs. Hardesty's plot. I was the only one who could stop her. I sat down at my computer. I IM'd Daisy and Duane. I asked them to come with me, back to Mrs. H's house. I told them it was a total emergency. They both said no. Duane wrote, Sounds like a bad plan. No way I'm ever going on her block again. Daisy wrote a very short message. Allergic to giant eggs. Sorry. Okay. Okay. I was on my own. I can do this, I told myself. They don't call me monster for nothing. Saturday morning, I checked out the camera in my cell phone. I snapped some shots of mom and dad at breakfast, just to make sure it was working. Then I tucked it carefully into my jeans pocket. Mom and dad hurried off to play their Saturday morning golf game. I hurried off to save the world. Mrs. Hardesty's blue Civic wasn't in her driveway. Was she away? I circled the house a few times to make sure. No signs of life. Nothing moving. I crept up close to the front and peered into the living room window. I saw a newspaper folded up on the couch. A coffee mug on the table beside it. No Mrs. Hardesty. I crossed my fingers. Maybe she was out shopping for more meat or something. I could just slip down to the basement, take a bunch of photos, and leave. Maybe. I crept around to the back. I peeked into the kitchen window. Oh! I uttered a cry and dropped to the ground. A green monster was standing in the kitchen, staring right out at me. Chapter 14 I hunched below the window, squeezing myself into a tight ball, and waited for the creature to stick its head out the window or to come flying out the back door to grab me. But no. After a minute or so, I realized it probably hadn't seen me. So I took a deep breath and pulled myself back up to the window. The monster stood over the stove. It had a long white spatula tucked in one claw. It was stirring something in a big frying pan. Eggs? I squinted through the window. Yes, it was cooking up a big pan of eggs. Now it had its back to me. I straightened up a little higher to see better. How did it escape from the basement? And how did it know how to cook? 
a thousand questions whirred through my mind. I shook them away and reached into my jeans for my phone. I raised the phone to the window and steadied it. No, no good. Too dark in the kitchen. I clicked the phone shut and shoved it back into my jeans pocket. I pressed my nose against the window. I watched the monster stir the eggs with the long spatula. And then the creature stuck out its other claw. It grabbed up a big hunk of egg and slid it into its mouth. It turned to the side. I could see the smile on its snout as it chewed. It chewed the eggs for a short while, then swallowed. And instantly, the monster began to change. Its whole shape wriggled and pulled in. Its green head shrunk and shifted until it became a human head. In seconds, the monster transformed into Mrs. Hardesty. I gasped. I nearly hit my head on the window. Mrs. Hardesty was a monster too. The eggs changed her back to her human body. If only I had taken a picture. If only Daisy and Duane had come with me. I'd have witnesses. I'd have proof. I watched Mrs. Hardesty reach into the pan. She picked up another chunk of scrambled egg. She took a big bite. In seconds, she stood there, a monster again. Another bite of egg, and she transformed back into Mrs. Hardesty. Wow, I couldn't believe what I was seeing, but I realized how powerful those eggs were. They could turn you from a monster into a human and back again in seconds. No one will ever believe this, I muttered to myself. And she planned to bring these eggs to school and feed them to everyone. I slid down to the ground. I sat with my back to the wall, trying to think, trying to make a plan. How could I get pictures of this without being caught? Even with the pictures, would anyone believe the power of the eggs? I shook my head, trying to clear my brain. And the back door swung open. Mrs. Hardesty stepped out onto the stoop. Michael! She cried. I thought I saw you! What are you doing here?